what exactly do you feel? Who's gonna help you now, my dear? Why do we always need extra time? Will you ever be mine or mine? So when was the last time you were on a swing then? Well, through years of going on swings, um, <laughs> no, probably about three years ago, <laughs> and it um, wasn't as pleasant as this. No? The same company, no. Oh, yeah. what a sweet talker, hey? Yeah. So, Lewis Mockler, how are you today? Not too bad, nice sunny day, and uh, looking forward to the gig. Tell me, how did we get to here? When did you start playing guitar and singing? I actually only started playing guitar um, about 18 months ago, so that was kind of new to me. My um, I had a radio interview with Star once and I did tell them that my, my mum was so annoyed for the first month of me playing the guitar because it was just, it was a nightmare, at least it wasn't her <laughs> drums. But uh, <laughs> yeah, the, and the singing all my life, I've been in karaoke competitions and all sorts of things like that, but I mean, went started going busking in Cambridge about 18 months ago with uh, another lad called Dan Barney, one to look out for, um, and uh, we just hit it off. I learnt the guitar and um, that's where the gig started. Went to loads of open mic nights and um, found Joseph Weaver. He took me aside and recorded me an EP. So, yeah, it's done me a good time. Talking about your EP, there's um, two of your original songs. How long have you been writing music? Writing music probably about four or five years because I'd always write things and think, oh, if I could write music to this, it'd sound all right. But, it was one of the things that sort of spurred me on to play the guitar. On the EP as well, there are two covers. One's by Adele and one's by our local lad, Ed Sheeran, who we will come back to in a minute. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you were in a few years to release another EP, would you continue with the covers or would you try and just put your own music on that? No, there's, well, secret, top secret. Um, there's an EP that's being worked on now, which is all just my own songs. So I thought the first EP was to get some covers up so people knew what I was all about. The second one's going to be, right, this is me now, so. Going back to when you were busking in Cambridge, whereabouts do you busk in Cambridge? You know the Grafton's, <laughs> the big Christmas tree. Oh really? Yeah. Every year, every year I used to, for about three years, it, it was just really fun. It was, people were giving money and it was like I was getting paid to do something I really enjoyed and that's why I realised that I wanted to do music sort of full time and that's what I'm working on now. Do you think that all artists should try busking? Yeah, it's great fun. It is great fun. And you just, um, when you're at a gig, people come to see you. And it's fair enough there'll be a couple of people that don't know you that are there. But mo most, the majority of people that are there come to see you. And when you're busking, no one's come to see you. And you can just see expressions on people's faces. Like, oh, actually, I mean, when I did Barry Bus the other week, I got a free burger off the burger of man, he was, uh, <laughs> that was really good, I just uh, made my day. Who's your favourite busker you've seen in the Cambridge area? Favourite busker, the guy who sings in the bin, he's unreal. That was what he's I was going for too, you've got unreal. to love him. <laughs> he's unreal, I met him and uh, we were just having a chat and he was just like, yeah I know, I was like, what inspired you to busk in a bin? He was like, well it's a bit different isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I do also like the um, singing Big Issue seller in yeah, Cambridge, yeah, he's, he's a bit good. of a legend isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I had my run-ins with the big, big issue people through busking. It was a funny time. Uh, I said, big issue, have a tissue. Got chased down the street. Wasn't, <laughs> wasn't my best moment. <laughs> Look at me. Look at me. Smile so bright. Cool on. Happy people now. Given you a new idea, you're going to perform from the top of a slide. Well, people have performed in stranger places, and I'm going to live like the busker in the bin and try doing a gig on a slide. You might attract a load of small children trying to get down the slide behind you. Is that a problem? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> Not going to give me the best day. <laughs> so, when we first saw your track on the upload, we noticed you referenced Ed Sheeran, who's obviously a local boy. When did you first find out about Ed Sheeran? Um, I found out about Ed Sheeran probably two and a half years ago so I was like one of his first fans and I sort of I used to email him and stuff telling them that I'd cover these songs busking 
and he's really grateful. Oh. But I'm so happy, like, someone local as well has just got so big in so little time. He's it's, it's really, like, he's one of my idols and everything he does is just, this is awesome. So what is it, do you think, that about his style of music that you like so much? He's very different. He's, he's very different. He's got such a relaxing voice. And, um, I mean, a couple of people have said that I sound like him and uh, that's really flattering, to be honest. But um, it's just what he does. He's, he's completely niche to everyone else. Um, I mean, with, even with the loop pedal, no one else. Since him, I, I went in to get my PA system and everyone was saying, oh yeah, can I have a loop pedal? He's, he's just been a big inspiration on everyone. Okay. A lot of people say your sound is quite similar to Ed's. What are you going to do to make yourself stand out and be a bit different? You don't want to have two suffocated yeah, cheerings, do you? Exactly. Got, <laughs> well, I'd like to think that my voice is a little bit different to Ed's, and a couple of my songs tonight you'll see the difference, which hopefully you'll notice tonight. So. Fabulous. Yeah. So, right, on your EP you've got a song called Love Recipe. What, what does your love recipe consist of? Mine, probably a bit of chocolate, candles, some Christopher. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm pretty much a hopeless romantic, to be honest. Uh, my love recipe would probably be the hangover, either one or two, hangover two, go watch it. Um, <laughs> I'd go for some chocolate with you guys and some nachos and cheese. And in love recipe, nachos and cheese is in the sun. There's also a bit of solo, we're riding solo. solo. <laughs> love that bit. So we're what right. made you stick in Jason Derulo into your song? At first it was just like, all oh, right, I'm going to do this. It's going to be my complete song. And then I'm going to chuck in something where everyone can go, actually, yeah, he's riding solo. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's just like, everyone knows riding solo. So I thought, if I do it, then someone can sing along and like, maybe we'll get that going tonight. Are you a fan, would you say, of his, his work? Uh, yeah, I, I do like Jason Derulo. I like everything. So like, I listen to Beethoven sometimes in the bar. So it's, it's, it's one of those things that I listen to everyone. But Jason Derulo is, is, is Jason Derulo. <laughs> so talking about solo... You're riding solo, because you are riding solo. You're a solo musician at the moment, but would yeah. you take on other musicians? Oh, yeah, definitely. Any chance to work with other people and to maybe join a band as well. I mean, I like doing my stuff on my own and I like writing on my own, but anything that can broaden my horizon, I wouldn't mind sort of if someone wanted me to join on or someone started joining something with me. I know me and Adam Musk were thinking about doing it, and uh, it's just anything, like I said, I've only played the guitar 18 months, so any help is welcome. Would you prefer to stay as a solo artist or would you prefer to recruit a band? Prefer to stay alone. Lone wolf. Wolf nice. pack, <laughs> wolf pack <only. laughs> Let's have some bubble wrap. Here you go. Do you like bubble wrap? I love bubble wrap. Here's some bubble wrap for you. Penny, this is what I do. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Anyway, you've got a song called Bubble Wrap Heart <laughs> leading swiftly into that. Is that the best way to protect a heart, would you say? Um, yes, or, and or, stop cardiac arrest. <laughs> <laughs> because I think they should do it in the Heart Foundation adverts. They just give them some bubble wrap. <laughs> Forget about the fish. <laughs> Screw the fish. Screw the fish. Let's put some bubble wrap in there. Um, yeah, bubble wrap heart means a lot. Come um, on, give us a bit. I want to pop some bubble wrap okay. too. Sorry. <laughs> My bubble Can't wrap has confiscated. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, bubble wrapped heart meant a lot to me. I wrote it in the bath as well. It started off bubble bath. Um, <laughs> bubble bath heart. Yeah. That doesn't make any exactly. sense. Exactly. <laughs> it's the kind of stuff I do in the bath. I'm literally <laughs> sitting in the bath and I was just jamming away like you do, splashing away. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> this song, I was, at the time I was with, with this girl and... Um, she, she sort of opened me up a little bit. I'm a very close person. And I was just, just proving the point that it, it doesn't help to be really closed up. If you are a closed person and you find that one person you think, actually, I could be with this person, um, tell them. There's no point. If you don't tell them, they're never going to know and then nothing will ever happen. And I'm just happily popping my bubble wrap.